Right, folks, I'm going to try and do a series of quick videos, a day in the life of uh, the, the Nissan Leaf. And I'll try to start by ProPilot, looking at that today, you know, since I've got some highway driving to do. And it's a pretty light scenario right now on the highways that I'm on. So from safety perspective, should be good. So as you can see, I've got ProPilot engaged already. I'm on a fairly open highway. This is the 407 series of highway. It's a toll highway, so it's usually not that busy because you have to pay for it. Um, and this is a little after the rush hour uh, when I'm on it, so traffic is uh, pretty light. I'm heading eastward to go to an appointment today. So I've kept the optimum speed set at 101 kilometers an hour, which is uh, just about 62, I think, 63 miles per hour. And that seems to be an optimum uh, range saving speed uh, to utilize on the highway. And I'm in no rush, I've got lots of time for my appointment, so I'm trying to head out there nice and smooth. Um, as you can see, our outside temperature is pretty warm today. It's 30 degrees uh, C already with a Humidex probably pushing 35. It's going to be a heat advisory day today here in the GTA, the greater Toronto area. So um, I had the car parked in the garage where it was uh, came out at about 25 degrees when I started my drive today at about 95% full charge. I did not have a full charge since I uh, charged up a bit yesterday and drove it around. So as you can see, right now I'm just using adaptive cruise control. I'm not using the lane key. And I've got it set, I believe, for one, but I'm going to change it now. So I've got a, a distance set for three. And as you can see, what it'll do is uh, I'm closing up on that truck ahead of me. And um, it's going to start to slow down uh, once I get a little bit closer to that truck within that three space. Um, so as you can see, my speed is starting to slow down. I'm not touching anything on the, any pedals or anything, any brake or accelerator on the floor. It slowed down to keep me within the distance behind that truck. And that's what the, the adaptive cruise control portion of ProPilot does. It, you set a speed um, and you set a spacing. And now the spacing will uh, grow and shrink depending on your speed, obviously. So it's not a, a full car length type of measurement where it's one space, two space, or three space based on car lengths. It's actually a, an algorithm that calculates how fast you're going and it has a, it calculates a safety space based on each of those units. So what I'll do now is I'll, I'll change my spacing to go to two and actually one and I'll close up. Now this um, Audi just uh, merged in front of me and I immediately felt the, uh, the car slow down a little bit as he did. So the adaptive cruise picked him up kind of cutting in between us. As you can see, my cruise is set at 101 on the adaptive, but I'm only doing about 80 kilometers an hour because this guy is just getting out of the way. Now he's getting out of the way and the car is automatically speeding up to speed. I am not, again, touching the pedals. Um, the car itself is speeding up and it's, it'll keep going until it can safely hit my um, speed that I've indicated at 101 kilometers an hour, which it has. And now I'm back and I'm slowly closing up on that truck again. So what I'm going to do is change lanes so that I can at some point pass this truck and continue on with my set speed of 101. So I've done that, I've changed speed, uh, I've changed lanes. So that's how adaptive cruise, uh, this guy's going to kind of front of me, as you can see, not really cut, but he's going to merge in front. And um, in this case, my speed did not slow down because the adaptive cruise sensed that the car ahead of me was not only merging in the lane, but he was accelerating away from me. So it didn't need to take any uh, action in any corrective manner by slowing down uh, the vehicle. So I've got my 101 set uh, pretty consistently and I've got some room here to continue on with that speed. So let's try the, uh, the other portion of ProPilot, um, which is the lane assist. So it's got lane warnings keep you in lane so if I if I drift a little bit on purposely here left um, you'll see I ride over the line I got this blinking yellow thing um, the uh, steering wheel vibrated as well and if I were to continue on that path it would actually activate just a quick pulse of the brakes to the opposite side of the car to bring it back into the lane so I've got both lane departure warning and lane departure intervention set as on in the vehicle and, and lane departure warning is just as it sounds it's the yellow warning drift to the right here and you'll see a little bit I'm drifting to the right I'll do that again and uh, let me do that one more time here and you can see that it's come up with that yellow marker um, 
So intelligent warning just warns you with a visual and a vibration of the steering wheel. Intervention will actually pulse the brakes if it needs to. If it thinks you're going off uh, lane quite, quite seriously, it'll do just a quick pulse to kind of try to nudge you back in. Again, these are these warnings only work when it's over 60 kilometers an hour, so that would be about 35 miles an hour, I believe, something like that, but it's definitely 60 kilometers. I've triple-checked uh, those numbers already. So they will not work underneath uh, or slower than those speeds. So let's try the pro let's try the lane assist part of ProPilot. So I've got it off by default right now. Um, so there's a um, button on the dash uh, down here with the steering wheel. If you press that button on, you'll see it say lane assist on, and you just heard a beep. Similar to the Tesla beep where it actually engages the autopilot. Here it's a similar sound. So now um, ProPilot is activated and lane assist is activated. So if I take a, a little bit away here, um, I'm not touching the steering wheel, you have to take my word for it, and as you can see, it's navigating the turn quite well, maintaining my speed, and maintaining the center in the lane. Now every 10 or 15, 10 seconds or so, it comes up with this warning, so I need to actually be touching the steering wheel. It is based on a torque sensor mechanism, so it feels the resistance from a torque perspective. If it doesn't feel anything after 10, 10 seconds or so, um, it will remind you that you need to grab the steering wheel because again it's a driver assist it's not a driver replacement mechanism it's there to make uh, driving situations like this on the highway where it's fairly open you've got some room uh, and but that you may be going for longer periods of time it's there to take a little bit of the edge off that driving so you can lightly just uh, put your rest your hand on the wheel and let pro pilot do the driving now uh, again sometimes it'll lose the lines uh, in this case uh, the lines are fading and it's actually doing quite well in, in having the ability to continue to see it. All right, so as I spoke, that double uh, tone meant that it just couldn't see the lines anymore, so it dropped the lane assist portion. So I've got my cruise control, or my adaptive cruise running, but as you can see, the steering wheel in there is grayed, not green. When it was green, that means that the lane assist was active and it was actually driving or steering the car. Uh, with it being gray, it means that, that the system's on, but it has not been able to recognize the lines through the camera system enough so that it can actually take over the lane assist portion of the driving. Oh, and now it just did. So you heard it beep. Uh, it's turned green and uh, right on cue. And now I'm back driving within the lanes within ProPilot. So again, I'll take my hands off the vehicle. My hands are not on the vehicle driving at all. You can see it's navigating this slow um, turn to the left that we have going here quite easily. Its uh, center keeps in the lane uh, fairly well. And uh, while I'm talking, of course, and when I see that warning come up, I just grab the steering wheel for a split second and uh, the warning will go off because I don't want it to go into a safety shutdown mode, which is something I can show you later on. But uh, so again, this is the experience for ProPilot. It is designed for motorway or freeway driving, and especially in these kind of circumstances where it's a fairly lighter uh, driving experience and uh, you've got some built up traffic, uh, but it, uh, and it, the weather is good, the roads are dry. Uh, I have tested this at night and it does work fairly well at night. Again, it depends on the road, it depends on the lane markings, depends on if there's any light fog or anything like that to interfere with it. Uh, but most of the time that I've tried it so far, it's worked pretty well. Uh, but I would guess that it's designed more for, you know, just motorway, freeway driving, uh, multi-lane rather rather than two-lane environments. It's interesting that sometimes it's worked, picked up uh, and, and started on a two-lane road very well, and sometimes it hasn't and it won't start. Um, I'm not sure why that is. Maybe it's the nature of the road, maybe it's a twisty, uh, turny uh, road versus a more straight road where the camera can get a sense of, uh, of, of picking it up easier to be able to maintain it, uh, the visual aspect of seeing the lanes. Um, but anyway, on situations like this, it's uh, it's still in ProPilot mode, as you can see. I've got my adaptive cruise working. Um, my adaptive cruise has slowed down slightly because the car in front of me is going a little slower than what I have a preset for. So it's uh, monitoring that. It's keeping the spacing that I've indicated based on speeds, and in this case, ProPilot uh, is keeping me in the lane as well from an automated feature. So this is the essence of Nissan's Level 2 autonomy called ProPilot, where you get that um, uh, driver assist experience in uh, the adaptive cruise functionality um, and the lane keeping with, of course, the warnings um, 
if you were to take it off into manual control. I have found in a couple situations where the turn's been a little bit too sharp that it won't navigate that and it will disengage. So you need to be prepared again. That's why Nissan and all the manufacturers, including Tesla, uh, recommend that you always keep uh, your hands on the driving, uh, on the steering wheel or a hand on the steering wheel to be able to take over actions immediately if something were to, to happen. Um, in this situation, I've got good visibility. I've got fairly light traffic. Um, I'm not going super crazy fast. I've got time to react if um, something happens, if I, somebody tries to cut in front of me or uh, something else like that. So in this situation, I feel fairly confident that I can just kind of relax a little bit more. Of course, uh, keeping an eye on my surroundings and on the roadways, but all the yet uh, relying uh, on the systems to do the job uh, that they do. And in these kind of situations, they do well. If it is raining, uh, if there's a light rain, ProPilot may activate it. Really, your, 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 each case is going to be different. Um, if the camera senses the wipers on more than I believe in a, any type of slow pattern where uh, I think it's just an interval pattern, then it will automatically not um, engage the lane assist portion of ProPilot. Uh, it figures it's raining too much and you really need to have the control of the vehicle yourself um, versus um, letting ProPilot do it for you. So that's a little bit more about ProPilot I mean, in the systems that it works. Uh, it works excellent. Uh, as you can see, especially for a single camera based system uh, where the camera is over the center uh, rear view mirror, it's just one camera and one radar sensor in the front that monitor uh, the ProPilot system. So it's pretty good for the amount of technology that it has in maintaining a driving experience. Again, all this time I've been talking now that it's been engaged um, and I've just basically touched the steering wheel to get rid of the messaging uh, telling me to touch it. Otherwise, the car has been driving itself the lane keeping itself and of course with the adaptive cruise has been maintaining the set speed and the set distances for many vehicles that uh, close up in front of me. It's been doing that all this time for about five ten minutes now um, so it's been pretty good. That double beep was just the initial warning that I forgot to keep my hands on the wheel for more than uh, about 25 or 30 seconds and that started was starting to go into a warning cycle system where it would repeat that a few times tap the brakes a couple of times and if there's still no response on the uh, driving the steering wheel then it would actually go into a shutdown stage where it would put on the hazards and stop basically slow and stop the car in lane so it does not pull the car over or anything like that it will stop you in lane not good if you're in where I am in the middle of a six lane freeway here or a motorway I don't necessarily want to be stopping in this lane but in an emergency situation if I were unconscious um, or some, you know, some medical situation, then that's exactly what it would do. And uh, hopefully, um, you know, people would, would recognize that and slow down and stop. One thing I wanted to mention, folks, when you're changing lanes, ProPilot does not change lanes for you. You have to manually do it. Um, if I were to change into this right lane, as soon as I signal right, as you can see, the, um, the wheel goes off. The actual lane assist part of uh, ProPilot goes off. Um, so now it's going to try to rehunt for the lines and it picked up the lines and now reactivated the ProPilot system. Here we can have an intersection coming up where the right lane, uh, the lane that I'm in is going to split off to a right lane. And uh, sometimes ProPilot loses itself in these situations. Um, see, it, so it lost and see how it's drifting right folks? Um, that's just because it's starting to find, it's trying to hunt for the line on the right focuses more on that situation and would replay that in, in a little bit slower, just watch it a couple of times. Um, as you heard, it disconnected the ProPilot lane assist function of it with that beep and then it started to, it hung in there for a second then it started to drift right and had I let it continue, it would have went most likely into that barrier, into those sand or water barriers that protect um, uh, deceleration lanes when you're getting off the highway. We've heard, the uh, reason I bring this up folks, is we've heard of accidents where Tesla's hitting walls and things like that. Um, and a lot of those cases, it's because of those kind of situations where you're in a right lane, you're in a, a well-marked lane like I am now, but then all of a sudden, um, that lane is going to split into two lanes basically. One that you can continue on in the highway and one that you can um, get off the highway on. And these type of systems at this point, um, I sometimes just have a hard time figuring out what's going on with that. The lane grew wider. So here I'm on ProPilot again. Um, and as you can see, it's going, it went right off to the right there. I did not want to go to the right. It pulled to the right uh, and went back on. And now it snapped back into the lane that I wanted to be in uh, without disengaging. So 
you know, you hear about reports about all of a sudden, you know, Tesla maybe um, uh, or a autonomous vehicle kind of jerking or losing in those kind of situations as well, where it's hunting for a lane and the, you know the lane is splitting up and it, it looks like it's found it, it will try to go to it. So that's why, folks, again, I can't stress how much importance be it a Tesla, be it the, the Nissan Leaf or any other, the Cadillacs or any other systems that have um, level two autonomy or, or driver assist aids like this, like lane control and so forth, you need to be aware of your situations at all the times, um, especially when you're getting through intersections, when you're getting uh, past exits uh, from highways and on ramps from highways. Sometimes these systems just get confused and they can't really figure out what they're doing. Uh, but as you can see, you know, with these kind of situations coming up, um, here, in this case, it was able to see the white, the white lanes enough to stay in it and not drift right. So again, it is fairly on a case-by-case -case situation. It's not consistent with these types of technologies, but uh, you definitely need to keep them in check. So there's a little bit more about ProPilot. That's my lesson for today, folks. Any comments or questions, please don't hesitate to let me know. Thanks, y'all.